Okay, in this video, we're just going to have a look at tracking views on a specific page as a conversion in Google Analytics 4. And we're going to be looking at doing that without Tag Manager, so just straight in the GA4 console. So what we're going to do is head over to our events and then under here, under our under our website. Um, for, for this, I'm just going to be using my own website just for an, uh, as an example. So we've got the website here. This is the GA4 property that's attached to it. Um, if you missed them, we've done a couple different videos on tracking phone number clicks, which you can see we've got here, tracking email clicks, which you can see we've got here. So I'll link up in the corner to those and they'll be in the end card of the video if you want to jump in and take a look at those. But in this, we're just going to measure one page. So really, it's probably going to be used as a success URL. So what I've done is just on my website, I've made up a page called Thank You. And it's pretty basic, but you know, thanks for signing up. So this could be for say a form, um, or you could have it as a success page um, as a callback form. It could be the success page for um, like I say a newsletter, anything really, just any kind of um, lead tracking you want to do. And then to obviously track this, you will just need the form to go onto this URL once the um, success part has happened. So most plugins have this built in. It's just the option of sending them off to a page afterwards. And if you don't have it in there, you can always just add a tiny snippet of JavaScript to sort of say, you know, on form success, send them to this URL. And then you've got your, your tracking URL there in place. So we've got this page here and what we're going to do is um, just sort of keep a note of this URL, but we're going to come back into here and we're going to go to create an event. And well, you can see we've got our two custom events in here and we're just going to go to create. And for this one, I'm just going to pretend like it's for a newsletter. So we'll just go newsletter sign. Oops, sorry, sign up. Right, and you can see here, um, I don't use any capital letters in my event names. I keep them all lowercase and you won't be able to use spaces in there either. So if you try to do event sign up like that, you'll just get an error telling you you need to use underscores. So for me, I'm just going newsletter sign up and you know, you could call it something vague like success, but then if you want to add a new one or form success, but then, you know, if you add a new one, you, you might want to differentiate it. So we'll call it newsletter. And then what we'll do is we'll say event name equals, and then in here we just want to do page underscore view, and then that's tracking every time a page is viewed. And then we'll add a condition to say the page location, which is essentially the URL up here. So we'll take this and we'll just copy that. And then we'll come back into GA4. And you do have options here. You can have contains. Um, the only thing I would say with that is that um, if you put something in there that says, um, you know, thank you as contains or whatever wording it is, just make sure that you don't have any other URLs that contain that because sometimes what I'll find is people will put that in and with contains and then um, they'll have like a post or something that says thank you to X, Y and then that post then is actually adding to the conversion data for this success URL. And obviously that is a problem and that's completely wrong and it's very hard to then sort of go back and untie it all. So what I would usually do is just say equals and then you know it's this exact URL and you can see here it says the input must start with HTTP or HTTPS. And what you'll find is when you just copy it from the browser, it'll copy that in anyway. So if we paste that into here, you can see we've got the, the main website URL, which is, again is just my website forward slash thank you. And then we'll keep the parameters on and we'll hit create. And then you can see now we've got newsletter sign up, which exists there. And then when we go back, because we don't have any, um, we don't have any data for this. So it doesn't always come in um, straight away. It's usually, um, I think next day they, they start sort of popping into here and popping in the data for the counts and the changes and everything. But what we can do, if we come up into, the reports tab and then we'll come into real time the second one down and then you can see in here we've got our events count and at the moment we've got six events that are all firing in there they're all our standard events and then what we'll do is we'll just hit reload on this page uh, because we went to it before the event existed so it never would have triggered in there 
and then we'll just check if this is going to come in so we should have um one out of seven when that event fires so we'll just check sometimes you'll need to clear cache it might be that you need to um, restart the session to to make it work i'm logged in so um i, I can't remember if i'm blocking data from um from logins on there but we'll just wait a second and just see if that does come up it's um it's just a page reload but we should have you can see up here it's come in as a page view. Uh, there's a couple of views there because I've looked at it before. Okay, so what I might do is go back quickly. Um, I'll just save that. If we just go back to the home page and then back to there again. So it's just a full page reload. And let's just quickly see if that pops in. Okay, we don't have that coming back. It's likely because that's part of the same session. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to open up an incognito window and then we're just going to jump in through here and this will just take us straight to the page. I'll just keep that on there for a second and just I'll just move that tab away. And that should be recorded anyway. But I mean, if we come back to here and just keep an eye on this, it should jump up to seven now. Okay, and you can see we've just had a new event pop in there. And then if we go to the next page, we've got newsletter sign up one. So it's probably just because we were in the same session and the event didn't exist sort of part way through that session. So you can kind of see we've got that. And then the next step, if you want to record it as a conversion, which of course you, you can, you come back in, go into your account and your property into events again. And then here, like I say, it's not here yet, but it, it will eventually show up. So if you want to mark it as a conversion, you can put it into, uh, you can just check it on here. And the same, you know, if you for phone number clicks and things like that. So yeah, that that's essentially it for, um, for, for that one. And in the next one, we're going to have a look at um, potentially marking up buttons with classes and things like that to, um, to track events on that. But um, yeah, hopefully you found that useful. Um, if you've got any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll try to kind of get back to you and help. And um, if you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more content like this, then please subscribe.